Well, well, this is gonna be Okay. <laughs> Today on Nonsense Wars, we look at the relatively niche 9735 Robotics Discovery Set, a 390 part Technic multi set released in 1999 for $150. Lego probably intended this product to serve as an entry-level counterpart to their flagship Mindstorms offering, the Robotics Invention System. The core programmable brick, the Scout, uh, did not require a computer to program or operate. We got this set not from eBay, but from my personal collection. I acquired it new a year or two after the release. Let's start by inspecting the box. The front has the name and the part count displayed on top of some related graphics, along with a brief how-to toward the side. Lifting the flap reveals a picture of all the parts, an overview of the Scout itself, and a more in-depth how-to. The box opens with flaps at the sides rather than a lifting lid, and the back shows the three main models and some of the alt ideas that don't have full instructions. 9735 doesn't have that many unusual parts, but then again, it doesn't have that many parts in the first place. The rarest bits are probably the soft yellow balls, and the strangest things are probably some of the trim pieces. The set also has a handful of Technic parts in strange colors, and of course a slew of electronic components, uh, modes of which have a habit of going bad. The heavy geared motors tend to seize, the wires of this time simply disintegrate, and the touch sensors apparently can fail as well. We had to use replacement motors, though we were able to get away with not repairing the stock wires. Now for a closer look at the Scout brick, which has roughly the same size and shape as the RCX. It takes the same 6 AA batteries in the same configuration with the same bottom cover. The top side differs a bit more uh, compared to the RCX, the Scout loses one sensor and one motor port for indicator lights, and it has a built-in light sensor. Also, the Scout has a different display area in order to accommodate the onboard programming. The included paperwork consists of a brochure showing other contemporary Mindstorms products, a quick reference card for the Scout, and the three manuals one for each of the main models and related alt ideas. The first book describes configuring and testing the Scout. The indicator lights and standalone operation actually make the Scout very useful for debugging other electronic components, motors, wires, and sensors. It can even run some modern power functions equipment. The rest of the first manual builds the first model, the Bug, a quintessential starter bot featuring skid steering and a simple bumper on each side. It has a couple buggy greebles and, oddly enough, different sized wheels in the front and back with the same gear ratios, though it may not matter much due to the low speed and gearing. When programmed correctly, the bug will drive forward until it hits something, back off, and then try to go forward again. You program the scout by specifying a default action, an action for the light sensor, and an action for the touch sensor. These commands range from go forward to seek light, but the more complicated actions don't necessarily have good documentation, and it doesn't seem like you can tweak them either. For example, when the bug triggers a touch sensor, the avoid action 
makes it back up and turn, but you can't tell it specifically how far or how much. You can bypass the limited programming using the Mindstorms remote, which we have right here. LEGO sold the remote separately, and it works on the RCX and the Scout. You can command the motors directly or even imitate a sensor activation. The remote signals with infrared, basically turning the bug into a simple PF vehicle. More on the remote later. For each model, the manuals provide ideas for hardware and software extensions. The bug book encourages you to play with the other programming functions and triggers, as well as the onboard light sensor. It shows some physical activities and other bug implementations, and even provides instructions for little bits of different bug hardware. The second manual builds the alarm a box with a shooter activated by the onboard light sensor. Already a bit boring due to its static nature, the alarm could use an increase in the sensitivity of said sensor. Even when starting in a dark room, it won't activate with the addition of ambient light. We need to point it directly at the light source, uh, in this case the ceiling light, before it would trigger. To be fair, the instructions suggest tagging it with a flashlight, but still the least interesting model in the set. Each set of instructions has checkpoints where you can test the preceding assembly. The Cybermaster, which, by the way, came out a year before Robotics Discovery, had these in digital form and we found it quite interesting to see the same in print form. Each set of instructions also has a couple of quirky building techniques, but nothing too unusual for the time or for a multi-set with such a limited part count. Even contemporary creator multi-sets often use multiple smaller bricks in place of larger ones, but at least 9735 doesn't have to worry about color. The third model, the Hoop Bot, comprises a moving platform with a hoop and a kicker. The kicker rotates on a clutch gear, and a stopper forces it to jam in kicked and reset positions. You try to score a basket while the bot and the kicker run back and forth in a fixed pattern determined by the scout's loop functions. Unfortunately, the it's kicker hard. design has a flaw. If a ball enters the hoop after a kick but before a reset, the kicker jams on the ball and can't recover. We tried to fix the problem in a couple different ways, but we eventually modified the stopper such that balls can't drop below the kicker before a reset. This reduces the amount of kick available, but it beats having the balls jam. Despite this flaw, we still consider the Hoopbot the best model in the set. It combines an element of gamification with a unique model in a very small parts budget. The concept has more in common with the Cybermaster Crusher than anything else in this set. Finally, the Hoopbot extensions expose some of the limitations of the Scout. For example, you can use the light sensor to activate the kicker only when a ball enters the machine, but you can't control both motors independently, so you have to remove the wheels. The fixed function programming, less than the limited hardware, uh, bottlenecks what you can do with the set. Nonetheless, we did discover our own extension. Controlling the Hoopbot with the Mindstorms remote turns it into a two-player game, again, much along the lines of the Cybermaster Crusher. 
Admittedly, the bot operator needs to manually return the balls, but on that note, this is the end of the video, so have a nice day. Ah. Damn it. I'm pretty good at this. All right. Oh. Ah, oh, okay. Ah. ah, nice. All right. That's good. Okay.